G'day folks. Well, I thought I'd get it so I can move this car tonight and um, do a little bit of an explanation on front wheel drive, well, particularly starting on videos like that involving rear axle assembly design and in this case drum brakes. I haven't done many car vids and I was hoping to do the braking systems on the Range Rover but that never happened. So I'm going to find a jack that fits under this car and we'll jack it up, take the wheel off and have a look. So I'm going to put a Toyota Corolla wheel on here. Uh, this one's still got good tread on it so I'll probably fix that. Uh, it can go in the front. The Corolla ones are a slightly higher profile and it would look kind of odd with the front sitting up high and the back sitting down low as normal. So I'll put them on the front, on the, um, the back and these can go on the front. The diagonal opposite is in the same condition of this. The one on the other side of the beam axle is completely rooted and perished, like it's cracking through the tread line. And that one there's just got a minor leak, but that's um, pretty much bald. So that one can go in the bin. I'll probably use that for a vacuum experiment. Hell, I might even leave it on the car. <laughs> but this one here has to come off, so I've got to find a jack to start with. That one came off easy. Now I'll find a jack, get this off, and we'll examine some drum brakes tonight. As long as YouTube doesn't regurgitate this video, you should be able to see a multi-piece video for once. There's a lot of dirt in there too. Yep. Another couple of pounds of dirt. Same with up in there. This is probably a dirt road car. The strut boot's a bit degraded. Not that it really matters, it all still works. Okay, that was surprisingly easy. I had a fair bit of uh, clearance underneath. I'm going to use my proper jack. I don't trust those little ones very much. Especially not when you want to pull bits, things to bits, although I never recommend getting under a car unless you've got a stand or something underneath. But yeah, let's uh, buzz this wheel off with a rattle gun and um, have a close look at that beam assembly. Because this beam just sort of hinges at the front there. And the um, shock absorbs are the only other thing tying it in. So it's got two swivel points, one at the front, one on the other side, and the uh, the strut there is the rest of the support, that's about it. And of course being front wheel drive, these are lazy wheels. They don't do anything apart from just rotate. They do not drive, they do not steer. They're just basically a bearing. So we'll take this tyre off and have a closer look. And we'll also look at the front when I get around to that and probably tomorrow. Okay, pretty easy to see what's in here. The rear hub assembly, uh, a few cables and lines, that's the handbrake cable, that pulls that on. Um, that's your master brake line, hydraulic that is. There's a flex hose going up there, up into the body. And there's a centre point halfway down the beam for the um, park brake by the looks of it. Yeah. Hydraulic park brake? Oh no, that's not. No, it's a swaged fitting, but it's a cable. It just sort of looks like a hydraulic line with a shield over it. But the, no, that's a rigid cable, and that just yanks on both sides and pulls this in. So if the hub's spinning and you pull on that, it stops. Sort of like the old school car brakes, which were all cable operated anyway. Fun to drive. And that heat shield's what's been giving me some funny noises too. This old muffler was hitting the body at one stage where I jammed a bit of heater hose in right at the end to keep it down. I'll have to change that anyway. But as you can see, no transmission tunnel. That's the fuel tank right there. There's a stiffening bar down the guts of the beam. And that's really about it. This just sits on big rubber bushings. If they go bad, the whole back end starts moving around, so you've got to change them if the car starts squirming around in the rear. <laughs> squirming around in the rear. It sounds dirty. <laughs> that bush is, that boot's broken there. That's just keeping dust out of the cable assembly. There's another one down there. Strut shaft looks all right. If you see oil and stuff coming up over these, it means it's leaked, the main seal's leaked. All right, I better get this hub off. This video is going to run too long. I think YouTube's going to reject it. Damn you. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt up in there. It's literally 
probably at 25 kilos of dirt jammed inside this car and probably go faster if I removed it all <laughs> okay that was easy enough to come off literally just fell off main outer bearing race the grease is very black and nasty it hasn't had new bearings for a long time so uh, that nuts also left hand thread remember that if you're working on one of them I don't know what the other side's like, I might try it one day, but I don't see any need to pull it to bits. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with these brakes, I just wanted to demonstrate it. The linings are a bit worn, frictional material. But yeah some fresh grease on them anyway. That's only a paddock basher but might as well do it properly. You can see the inner race has been spinning on the shaft too. Like it just fell off. It, there was no resistance whatsoever. And of course these two brake shoes on hydraulic it actuates both of them. It pushes them both out like that. It spreads them out into the drum. On manual park brake it only seems to move the rearmost shoe just pushes it out to the drum and locks it in which is probably better than just having a separate brake somewhere else like on a tail shaft which this doesn't have so it has no other option but to brake or use these brakes to, as a park brake you don't don't brake the front wheels for your park brake those pins there just keep it all in place I'm guessing you have to pop rotate that collet and pop that out to remove the shoes Yep. And that's just your brake slave cylinder there that pushes these pistons out when you, oh, sorry, when you depress the brake pedal, hydraulic pressure comes in here and there's two little pistons and they spread out and push these shoes out. Uh, the lighting is terrible at the moment, but I hope you can see that. Yeah. I can't really see the display on this camera very well either. It's late in the afternoon and the sun's going down. But yeah, there's a little brake bl air bleed nipple on the back there. So I hope that gives somebody some ideas. I know people seem to enjoy my engine videos and things. Um, one of the reasons why I got this car was so that I could show people how some of this other stuff works. Not just the engine itself. So, yeah. That's a rear drum brake on a front wheel drive car. Uh, if this was rear wheel drive there would be an axle retainer plate and an axle, a fixed axle hub. You'd probably have to pull the axle itself out to get most of this apart. So it's a different animal again which I'll try and demonstrate one day. But this is front wheel drive, rear axle drum brake. Even a lot of new cars, my mum's almost new Mazda 2 has drum brakes on the rear. I can't remember exactly why that is but some countries require it for front wheel drive vehicles and they just make them all to standard. They work perfectly well, the thing stops on a dime but they still use front wheel discs, rear wheel drums on many new cars and I don't have a problem with drum brakes. All drum brakes could be interesting to drive, Brad's Mercedes I think has all drums but yeah that's that car is 40, 50 years old I think it's about yeah, 1960 model, so it'd be 40 years old. No, 50, sorry. Yeah, it is 50 years, over 50 years old now. Damn it, I can't remember. How old's your Mercedes, Brad? Answer me. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pull all this back together again and um, try and save this video file. I might even save it. No, no, I won't save it in lower quality. You won't be able to see all the details. That's what I like about high quality videos. You can see all the details. Oh, well. Thanks for watching. I'm going to put one of those Toyota Corolla wheels on the back. I suppose I better show the inside of the drum too. Yeah, that's a frictional surface inside there. And inner bearing race. Which looks like it's sort of, well, it sort of looks like it's been spinning, maybe not. Yeah, yuck. Those are old bearings. Thanks for watching.